you live in a, in a city like this, where do you get the opportunity of seeing animals? It means an awful lot to me. It, it just gives me that happy feeling. And a happy feeling at my age is very, very important. This isn't your typical afternoon in a care home. Some unusual visitors have arrived. Guinea pigs, bunny rabbits, and even Mabel the chicken has made the trip. I think I must be a rabbit person. Though I've never eaten rabbit in my life. But they aren't just here to entertain. The animals are part of a project trying to tackle the growing problem of older people becoming socially isolated. The residents of Donnybrook have conditions of varying severity. They live in their own flats with support from carers, but they can all be susceptible to feelings of loneliness. I, I left my family 70 years ago. A lot of them have passed away. So when the animals come to visit, does it feel a bit less lonely? It does, yeah. But we might be back home. 3.5 million people over 65 in Britain live alone and one third of all people with dementia live by themselves. At Donnybrook, the residents are supported, but sometimes there's nostalgia for more active times. It does make a difference, because I used to go out to the farm, took my grandchildren to the farm, and school holidays, you know, so it does make a difference. Because you can't go out to the farm now, it's a long way from here to the farm, and you can't make it there. Lena's family visit often, but the animals help bring back happy memories of her youth in Jamaica. We used to have rabbits at home and, ch and chickens as well. You feed them with the corn, you know, and they pick it up. Mm. It's normal. You bring back the memories of the people when you're young. At the end of the day, the animals return to nearby Stepney City Farm, ready to be taken to another care home next week. Furry Tales, a charity based here, runs these sessions every Friday. It's especially designed to encourage touch and trigger memories. The charity's founder, who grew up on a Devon farm, was inspired to start the scheme when she saw the impact of dementia on her own grandfather. And for some people, I think especially if they're in the advanced stages of dementia, they spend a lot of time potentially feeling quite challenged um, and therefore sometimes withdrawing. And I think the presence of an animal can cut through that and it offers someone just a warm physical presence. It's non-judgmental, they're not asking awkward questions. So I think there's something for everyone, but having the animals there just breaks that barrier and draws people together. With the growing costs of social care becoming a concern in society, innovative schemes like this one are interesting health commissioners across the country. Alice Everett works with GPs keen to offer isolated patients new ways of interacting with the community. You know, when you're, you're older, you're isolated, actually you no longer have a lot of those very normal um, forms of contact that you would have perhaps if you're in a family setting or around other people. Having that experience was really important. This isn't about replacing conventional medicine. It very much you know, complements the, the medical model and it really is an acknowledgement of all of the social issues that contribute to all of our you know, health and well-being. Of course, guinea pigs and bantam chickens won't fix the problem of loneliness, but projects like this are challenging the medical profession to think differently about social care.